Welcome, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of the Think Global Podcast. I'm your host, International Sef, and today's date is February 28, 2021. I'd like to thank everybody who's been following this channel and making us grow. We got a large subscription growing, taking it one day at a time. But if you do like this content, make sure you subscribe to this channel, like this video, and comment. We got another overseas basketball player coming on the Think Global podcast today. The kid from Rochester, New York. My man has been going around, killing them all over across the world. And now we have come over on the Think Global podcast and tell his story. My man, Chauncey Leslie. What's up, Chauncey? Welcome to the Think Global podcast, my brother. Thank you. Thank you for having me, man. Thanks, man. Appreciate you uh, reaching out. Yeah, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. The last time I think I saw you, man, was out here in Qatar. You was hooping for uh, Qatar Sports Club. I want to say maybe, I don't know, 2016 maybe or something? Yeah, 2015, 2016. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So you're out of Cali right now, man. It's good that you're healthy and you're you're doing good, man. We're going to get into your story. But before we do, we got a quick segment on our show called World Call. And that's when we give our guests 10 seconds to name off some of the uh, countries that that you visited. All right? So we're going to put Chauncey Leslie on the World Call. Ready? Go. France, Germany, uh, Hungary, China, uh, Qatar, Egypt, Dubai. Uh, hey, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, that's good. 10 seconds is up. That's 10 seconds is up. But you've been around, I mean, all the way in Far East Asia, the Middle East, and Europe, right? So you, you, went to, you, you went to the University of Iowa, right? That's a Big Ten school. That's, 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 that's big-time basketball. What years were the year? I was there from uh, 2000 to 2003 under uh, Steve Offer. Okay. Um, who are the, some of the, 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 the players? Because you play point guard, and I know the Big Ten has, has some uh, real, real good point guards coming through who are actually in the NBA now holding it down. Uh, who are some of the guards you played uh, play with when you were there? Uh, so who I played with at the time, it was me and this guy named Pierre Pierce. Uh, uh, and then we had Luke Rucker on our team, a shooter who uh, actually – Got drafted, but ended up playing overseas. We had Reggie Evans, who actually played in the league, who uh, basically retired a couple years ago. Uh, we had an amount of good players. Um, we was ranked ninth in the country, but it wasn't like Duke, who had nine players that was going to the league. Yeah. We were playing against them and shit like that. But uh, it was a good, it was a good run in, in, in college. I so, can't, I can't complain. So how did that? That, that experience or that competition at that level prepare you for a professional basketball career? I mean, you're, you, you mentioned Duke. Uh, you know, you're going against, you know, like you said, they're, you're going against NBA talent pretty much each and every night. So how did that prepare you for a uh, career overseas? Well, coming out of, uh, coming out of New York, you know, we're, we're, we're dribblers. We're not, we're not shooters. <laughs> uh, so I had to learn quickly that, hey, I got to learn how to shoot. Cause going into college, I was never a shooter. I was just a fast player that can get to the basket. Uh, so after my first year getting killed at D1, <laughs> uh, I had learned the first thing I need to do is start learning how to shoot this goddamn ball to be be able to compete with uh, any of these guys. And uh, after my first year, just getting better, like just doing pull-ups and, and hitting threes, it became a lot easier because I was a lot faster than a lot of guys. Yeah, yeah, okay. So you put in that work. What was that 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 junior year going into your? Uh, cause I saw that you had a significant increase, which is which is pretty much a normal and typical. You know, as the higher you go up in your in your in your uh, your year grade, your, your freshman to sophomore, junior, senior, you should your numbers should be improving. But you made a significant amount of improvement from your junior to senior year. Was that just a just a um, a result of the the work that you put it in? You're talking about getting your your jump shot right and your three pointers right. Well, it, it was the work, but it was also understanding film. Like, I watched film a lot over the summer uh, on ways I can score in positions and how defense uh, guarded me my junior year. So going into games, I already knew the spots I can score in. So I just tried to get to my spots before uh, defense could. It was all about understanding film and how defense play me. Uh, that's what made me a, a better player going into my senior year. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. And it definitely worked because as a result of that, you know what I'm saying, you had you you did it what a lot of guys, you know, aspire to, especially kids these days. You had a career playing professional basketball. How many years did you play? What country did you did, did you start off in? First thing I would say is that I I hate to say this, but I made a big mistake uh coming out of college. 
because uh, I was getting recruited by a couple NBA teams and I promised my mom I would graduate. So I stayed in school and I never went to the sport, the, the program, I mean, the, the Portsmouth or any of the, the NBA workouts until after I graduated, which was pretty much too late because uh, teams kind of figured, kind of knew who they wanted to bring in. Mm-hmm. I still got a couple NBA workouts, but team had a mindset uh, who they was looking at. Mm-hmm. So it was kind of difficult uh, working out for Toronto and working out for Philly and working out for Golden State and, and Sacramento because they kind of knew who they wanted to see. So it was just more of like, okay, let me get my name up so I can go over and make the most money as possible going overseas. Uh, and then that's when I fell into China by doing them, them NBA workouts. And I had a big contract in China coming out of college. Okay, that's what's up. So so you did a couple of uh, private workouts with a couple of franchises. And then uh, you, you you land on to China. What was the what was your I mean you know what I'm saying you're a kid from Rochester, New York. You played at Iowa. You know what I'm saying. You played in the states. Now all of a sudden you have was this your first international experience getting getting of dropped off in, in in China? You know a billion people. You know a whole different culture, different leagues, different players. You know what I'm saying. How did you feel at that point? Man, it was a big a big change in life. Uh, getting overseas. First, I was the uh, I was the first person that they brought in as a uh, foreigner, and uh, we was looking for a big man. Now, me being a rookie, I was hoping I was gonna go in a situation where a team would have a veteran that would kind of, you know, train me and, and show me how the overseas like lifestyle works. But when I was in China, we went through fifteen big men in two months. <laughs> so I never really connected with an American, and at the time coming from America and like trying to figure out what to eat and like how to stay healthy. I ended up losing 15 pounds in two months and I just ended up leaving. Like I bought a plane ticket after my second paycheck and I left and no one knew where I was for like three months. My agent called me like, yo, no one found the coach told me he was gone for three weeks. I was like, I'll be home with my daughter. (laughs) Like I literally disappeared for three months. And it was really like, should I play basketball again or should I? And I was like, in that mindset, that's how bad, like, so, it was for me my first year. Okay, so was it the basketball aspect or was it just life by yourself in a foreign country where you don't speak the language, you don't know what you're eating, you know, it's a difficult, was it the cult- culture shock that put you off or was it just this whole new, uh, you know, persona being a, a professional. You're not a college when it's getting handed to you. No, you got to do it all yourself now, I'm saying. What was it that made it made it so difficult? It was a culture shock. The, the work ethic was still there. It was the culture shock, the language, because everyone on the team didn't speak English. I had a translator. The coach didn't speak English. So I had to go through everything through the translator on, on like, plays and, like, practice and, like, all through traveling. Uh, China was kind of like the NBA schedule where you always traveling. So like I used to bring, I used to go to McDonald's and buy hamburgers and then have that for five days. Like I literally, I'll put it on the train and, and I'll eat burgers and fries cold for like four or five days and then do it again. Like it was just, it was a bad situation as far as like trying to understand the the overseas culture and lifestyle. And it really made me not love the game. I was thinking like, damn, I don't think I could play. I don't think I could do this. <laughs> wow, man. That's so, I'm, I mean, I, I, I'm sorry that that's happened to you, but in a way, because I know that you, 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 you fought through that junk and you, you know what I'm saying, you made it happen. But I'm so glad that you talked this because we talked about on the, on the, on the, pre, the pre-show that, you know, the ugly side of overseas basketball and the grind it is being away from your family and, you know, the uncertainty of, oh, I don't know if this team is going to release me next week or what if I get injured, you know, we don't have guaranteed contracts and all this. So it's good that you brought up this point where, Yo, this was like a culture shock to you, and uh, it was something that that put you off and made you question: Do you want to uh, continue to play basketball or not? So you go back home. What was the next gig? I mean, you fought through that. You got back in the gym. You got your mind right. You know what I'm saying? You pushed through it. What What was the next gig, and where did you go from there? Uh, so uh, H, uh, Asian reached out to me out, out of hungry. It's like, yo, man, uh, I I like your resume. I think I got a team for you who will, who will just let you do you. You don't got to worry about the food because uh, my agent was putting out there another. My agent was like, yo, he's not going to go play because 
you know, like food and this and that. And the agent reached out and they're like, yo, you don't like the food? I'm going to put in your contract that you eat two times a day for free. And I'm like, fuck it, let me, let me just try it. And uh, I went to Hungry and the coach was like, yo, here's the ball. Got MVP, guard of the year, all that stuff. And uh, it just went, it just went good, man. It, it went good until I, I obviously I had surgery on my knee, uh, but I had, I had major contracts in, in, in all countries. Like I had it set up where I had a contract in uh, Holland, <clears throat> which was like a, a big thing because it was going to pay me like 150. And then right after that, during the summers, I was going to go to Venezuela. They was going to pay me 20, 20, 20,000 a month. So I was going to be a whole thing. And then I, I, I hurt my knee. Man, it's tough. It's tough. It's tough. Like that injuries are definitely, definitely difficult to overcome. I played in Holland as well, man. And uh, yeah, that was, that was an interesting league. Um, so when you look back now, man, um, when did you get to the Middle East? Because I know, like, I know that you were putting in a lot of work in Lebanon. Uh, when you came to Qatar, you know what I'm saying? You won a lot of chips with El Rayon Club. So when, when did you come to the Middle East? Uh, after my surgery, <clears throat> uh, Sporting Good had reached out to me in Egypt. Uh, and the, coach, the head coach, his, his first job, he was like, yo, I really like your game. I know you had surgery. I can help you get back. Uh, you just got to trust in me and I trust in you. We both can help each other. And I was a little skeptical about it. So I said, no. So my friend was like, hey, come come to Syria because you could be on my team. Like my best friend, we grew up together. So like, I, I'm just going to go to Syria. I get to Syria. He's already the man. He's averaging like 30. But, you know, it's, it's one American on the floor. <laughs> and my knee is messed up and I'm trying to get back. And then they're like, well, you know, I think we need a we need a big man. So we want you to try it against a big man. I'm like, I'm a guard. It's a big, that just doesn't even make sense. Yeah. So I called back the coach from Egypt. He's like, look, I want to come. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, hey, let's go. I went there, went to Egypt. He got me back right. That year we won a championship. They offered me to come back. But I was like, nah, it's time for me to uh, go somewhere else. And then I ended up in Dubai. We won a championship in Dubai. <laughs> So the Middle East has been good because almost every every team I've been to, I won a championship with. Uh, and I kind of got a big name in the Middle East, and I respect the Middle East in general for showing me the love uh, they did in every country I've been to. For sure, man, for sure. Congratulations on that. So when you look back, what were some most memorable, like, moments of your career, man? Was it, like, one special championship where, like, you know what I'm saying? It was, like, you know, something that you, you you know, maybe he had your back against the wall, you guys pushed to. Was it a special team? Or what was your career high in points? Or how many three-pointers that you have you hit before in a, in, in a professional game? Uh, one of my career highs was when I got a chance to play against uh, – the number one team is Syria. I can't forget their name, but and the only reason why it's a, a, a good moment for me because when I first went to Syria, when I hurt my leg, we played against them, and they were people were just blowing by me, and I because I couldn't move like that. So when we when I got to uh, Sharjah, we had you know some non-conference games, and we was traveling. I got to play against their ass again. I hit 12 threes. I had like 55. And, uh, and and it was like eight minutes left in the fourth quarter. And the coach just put me out. Like, I, it was like a mission to show them, like, y'all fucked up. Uh, one of y'all should have picked me up. So that was one of my, my highs. And also uh, the championship I won with Charge, because they haven't won a championship in like 57 years. And when I got there, we won, we won the chip. That's what's up, man. That's what's up, man. Sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah, man. Um, so what 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 was some I don't want to circle back to what your 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 experience of uh coming back from China, but what were some benefits of playing playing overseas? Just regard the 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 finances of it. What what kind of the was it enriching to you as a as a person? Um, you know, what did you learn from from being exposed to other cultures and languages and different players and all that? What was the benefits uh looking back? of playing overseas, having a career overseas? I think for me, uh, especially uh, just Americans in general, we were so uh, close-minded. So when you're able to travel and see all these other countries, uh, you realize how blessed you are in some ways. And you also get to see the way people live, where people come from, 
how they react to certain things uh, and just overall seeing the world for me was was amazing. Obviously it was tough like being away from from home but you have to take the positives out of everything and I think for me it was just like getting to have friends around the world like for example me and you like just getting to have friends and, and keeping the relationships whether you talk once every four months or once a year to still having them relationships and like coming back to something like this. For sure. I could vouch for that. I could vouch for that. Okay, man. Well, um, we always want to leave the, the show with a positive note. Um, I know that you still be involved with around the game and you, you know, you always are looking up to um, athletes like yourself who have been accomplished and stuff. What advice do you have uh, for like a young player who, you know, either in coming out of college or, you know, trying his luck is uh, his or her luck in, um, you know, collegiate sports and want a professional job going overseas? Because I know like a lot of people always ask me, I want to get overseas. I want to get overseas. I want to get overseas. Hey, you got any contact? Let me get overseas. OK, so what what advice could you give for somebody in these um, situations? Nothing is given to you. You, you have to work hard for it. Uh, and. One thing I will say, because people always call me all, all the time about, can you get me on overseas? A resume now is very important. <laughs> like back then you could possibly get in without a resume. Uh, but now that is so many kids and so many people are taking less money, which makes it harder to get overseas. So do what you need to do. Concentrate while you're in college for six months. If you can concentrate for six months in college, the rest of your career in college is going to be good. And then overseas or whatever you try to do after that will come easy. Just focus for six months when you first get to school. And that will, that will set a path for you to be successful. That's what's up, man. Words of advice from Chauncey Leslie on the Think Global podcast. Uh, one last question, man. How's, how, how's young Keith doing, man? Does he got a shot, man? He, uh, we actually, I don't know if you noticed, know haven't been watching, but his, his head coach, I got fired, uh, from New Mexico, which was a thing. He is looking at to looking to transfer, but now we're rethinking that because the head coach is gone. Cause that was one of the issues. Mm -hmm. So now we're just in a place where, uh, I don't know what we're going to, what direction we're going to go. But since he is my son, he more than likely will be playing professional somewhere because of all my connects. I just want to, I want him to do it for him, not for me. Uh, that's my main thing. I don't want him to try to do what I did, be better if you want to do it, but you don't have to play basketball. So we're trying to decide if he should transfer or not. That's what's up, man. Well, best of luck to him, man. Uh, I coached a young man for a few months out in Doha when he first started dunking, but then I see him on ESPN doing his thing in New Mexico, man. It just made my, you know, really, really proud of the kid because I see the amount of work that you all been putting in, man. So shout out to Keith and uh, shout out to you. Keep doing your thing. Any future projects you want to discuss real quick before we let you go or, you know, what you got going on in California with personal training and the working out and all that? Oh, so I, I do personal train. Uh, but right now, not taking on clients. Right now, I'm focusing on my son. Uh, I will say this. You might see him on the uh, Qatar national team. Uh, we're, we're, we're working on that because he was under the age to be able to be on the team. So look out for that. That should be something happening in the next couple of years, possibly. I tell you one thing right now, they need that <laughs> for real. <man. laughs> I saw them the last couple of competitions. I was like, yo, there ain't too much to get really, really excited about. Just keeping it real. I mean, they got a couple of sound players, but, you know, the discrepancy between old and young, nobody in between. So they need some uh, other players, man. Yeah. Well, that's why they reached out to me, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They're going to need that, man. They need that. So hopefully that, that thing will shake for you all, man. Hey, man, I appreciate you coming on the show, my brother. And uh, stay safe, stay healthy, man, and best of luck with you. All right, you too, man. Let's We're going we gonna to connect again. For sure, for sure, for sure. All right, have a good one. All right now, peace. Bye.